Hello guys, welcome back to the podcast. Uh, we're gonna call it the Panda Podcast from now on, episode number three. Today we're gonna talk about gay people, hooray! As you may know, in the, in the United States uh, and in Europe, I guess, it's Pride Month, uh, a month to focus on the LGBTQ community. So today I'm gonna talk to you about how I overcame my homophobia, my religiously indoctrinated homophobia. Um, as you may know, Jehovah's Witnesses are one of the most homophobic Christian groups ever. Uh, homophobia is not exclusive to Jehovah's Witnesses. It's present in pretty much most of the world still, especially in countries that are majority Islamic. So today I want to tell you my personal experience with gay people and uh, trans individuals. And I want to share with you my very intimate experiences on how I changed my mind, uh, how I went from being someone who couldn't stand gay people to someone who is pretty much an ally to the LGBTQ community. Now, if, I know I have all sorts of people in my audience. I know I have a, I have a lot of conservative individuals who might be pissed at the existence of a uh, month of pride. They might say, oh, we dedicate only one day to our veterans and we dedicate a whole month to the gays. <laughs> uh, and for you kind individuals, I kindly ask you to have an open mind, to, to listen attentively because I know these are very sensitive topics and I know that whether you want to admit it or not, most of the hate towards the LGBTQ community comes from a place of religious indoctrination. And I want to make that clear in this podcast that all of the hate I had towards the LGBTQ community was based on my religious indoctrination. And I'm gonna we're gonna talk about the arguments that religious people give against. LGBTQ issues, and I'm gonna tell you why I don't find them convincing anymore. So we have a lot to talk about. It's a lot of my personal experience, and if you have anything to report to the comment section, uh, please comment, comment away. I love hearing your experiences, um, but I do ask you to be respectful as always. As you, as you know, as you probably know, I've been an ally of the community for pretty much since the inception of the channel but I haven't always been this way. So let me explain. Um, yeah, uh, homosexuality is treated as an, abom as an abomination by the Jehovah's Witnesses. This means that it's treated as something unnatural, as, some, as a grave sin, for example. Uh, in the eyes of the congregation, having gay sex is way worse than having a heterosexual sex, straight sex. And watching gay porn is way worse than watching straight porn. Even though in the eyes of the Bible, really, these, I mean, sexual sins are at the same level, technically. <laughs> but as you know, in practice, um, the homophobia is, is just a big problem in, in the Christian community. And I know it's a big problem outside the Christian community, especially among is Islam. But today we're going to focus on Christianity because that's my area of expertise. I mean, that's my area where, where I'm more comfortable with. So we're going to focus on that. Uh, in case you want to say, well, what about Islam? Yeah, <laughs> I know it's a big problem in Islam, but I was never a Muslim. So that's not my area of expertise. So, yeah, um, in the book of Leviticus, there is a verse that says that a man that is caught sleeping with a man should be stoned to death. And when you're growing up a Jehovah's Witness or a conservative Christian, you are raised with this ideology that gay people are deserving of death, or at least they were deserving of death back in the time of Moses under the Mosaic law. Now, a lot of Christians might say, hey, well, this was in the past. Uh, we, we, we don't have to stone gay people anymore. We, we are commanded to love them. Well, yeah, that's true. But still, uh, if you worship this unchanging God, right, who created the Mosaic law and he mandated stoning gay people, then 
that means if he's unchanging, he would still have the same view of gay people, which is complete, uh, a complete hatred of them. Um, and that's what you're taught. When you're a Jehovah's Witness, you're, you're brought up to believe that gay people are, are twisted. They're an abomination. And I'm not making it up. If you've seen my pillow gate videos, you see Gary Bro describe gay uh, homosexuality as an abomination before God. Um, it's treated as something unnatural. So the Watchtower has kind of softened its stance a little bit. So before, they used to teach that uh, you are, um, what do you call it? You grow gay. Like it's something you learn. Like homosexuality is something that you adopt. But now they they allow the possibility of, you know, saying, oh, well, actually, some people are born with homosexual tendencies. And I think more Christians are coming to grips with that reality that gay people are simply born that way. And I know it's complicated. I know I know the nature versus nurture thing is goes deep. You know, it's like it's not 100 percent nature It's not 100 percent nurture. I know every case is different, but for the most part, and I think most gay people would agree with me, most people that identify as gay have always felt that way. So it's not something they can control. And I think it, it never made much sense to me. Even as an indoctrinated Jehovah's Witness, it didn't make much sense to, um, to you know, I thought to myself, you know, I'm straight. I I can't I can't be gay. Like I can't pretend to to be to like men. You know, it's it's like if if someone asked me, "Hey, well, God asked you to like men because that's the right thing to do." I simply wouldn't be able to do it because it's not in me. So, it didn't make much sense to me that we're asking gay people to to start liking for example in gay men we we ask them to start liking women and it's just not natural for them because it's not in them you know it's you can't ask a straight person to be gay and you can't ask gay people to be straight it's it's not it's not how it works and we've seen it with conversion therapy which is like a barbaric method that is probably still happening in a lot of communities and gay conversion therapy is like you know forcing people to become straight which is horrible it's horrible um gay people have suffered so much under religion um that it's it really does break my heart it really does break my heart so many gay people have killed themselves over this because they're simply not accepted as who they are when you're a jehovah's witness and you're gay you're expected to to simply not act on your desires so you you can be gay but but if you want to be right with god you cannot pursue a romantic relationship with someone of the same sex so you are commanded to hide who you are you are commanded to become someone you are really not which is super super unfair and it's it's like you're supposed to have this mask on all the time. And just the hate you receive from the community, you know, if you've ever been a Jehovah's Witness, you know that they're vicious towards gay people. <laughs> they will demean them. They will um, talk bad about them. I remember when I was a Jehovah's Witness, I would focus a lot on the verse that's, I think it's in Romans, the one that says that God let men uh, he gave themselves, he gave men to their desires, basically. And it says that men, be, it says like men left the natural use of the female and they became passionately inflamed <laughs> towards one another. So I always had this image of gay people, of gay people being like animals, like they couldn't control themselves, like they, they would almost like hyper sexualized. And that, that was my image of gay people back then. The, the, they just, you know, gay men, they just had at it with as many men as possible. They were just depraved. And it was, 
I, I just looked down on them, honestly. <laughs> I just couldn't comprehend how how someone could could be gay, you know, and, and how how dare you not like submit to God <laughs> if you know what I mean. So yeah, it was difficult. Um we when you grow up a Jehovah's Witness, you know of a few individuals that are obviously gay. <laughs> you can just tell. But you see them that they are forced to um to, you know, be straight. And I remember one dude in Denver, Colorado, who was obviously gay, I mean, or at least bisexual, but he, he had very uh, clear mannerisms, you know, not to stereotype, but he was clearly a gay man. But now he's married to a woman, you know, is he bisexual? Is he gay? I couldn't tell you, but you see it a couple of times. Do you see gay individuals who, who are forced to marry straight women? <laughs> and it's just not fair for the man or for the woman to do this. So it's a complete mess, just a lot of vitriol. So once, um, before I woke up from, from this religion, and I, I talk about this in my waking up story, um, I was traveling through the United States, right? And I was, um, I was traveling through San Francisco and you know San Francisco is famous for its LGBTQ community. It's like a gay hotspot, <laughs> if you will. And I decided to do couch surfing in San Francisco. So if you don't know, couch surfing is like this app where you you like stay with someone and then they lend you their couch or they lend you a room and it's like you you couch surf. You you stay with them like one night or two for free. And it's like a community of travelers where you help each other out and you help each other find, you know, accommodation. So I decided to stay with this dude who lent, who said, hey, yeah, you can stay over. And then, but then he asked me like, okay, I just gotta let you know that I'm a gay man. Uh, I just wanted to ask you if there's any problem with that. And I, I said, you know, no, there's, there's not. <laughs> I just wanted a free place to stay. And I was curious, you know, I had never like, I had never really interacted at length with a gay person before. So I was like, okay, it's interesting. Maybe I can preach to him. Maybe I can talk to him about Jehovah. <laughs> so I stayed with this dude. And he was very kind to me. He um, he let me stay for two nights. He cooked me dinner. He was this Filipino Catholic. But he, um, yeah, he was, he was a gay man that... That was it. <laughs> he was very respectful towards me. Um, I had this idea in my head that he might he might like flirt with me. You know, remember I saw gay people as like hypersexualized, so I thought, oh, this dude. What if this dude like tries a move on me or something? But no, he didn't. Of course not. He was very respectful. We talked. We talked about religion. We talked. We talked about our lives. And I remember like before I left, like. I left a little JW.org card on his on the room he lent me. I left it like on the counter to say like, oh, you know, hopefully he checks out the website. So once I left San Francisco, I uh, I was driving up north, up to Oregon, and I was thinking to myself, you know, that was very silly of me <laughs> because if this guy were to convert, he would have to deny who he is as a person. And he would he would be, go into a, a community who actively hates him for who he is, right? Because if you convert into a Jehovah's Witness, you're just not allowed to be gay or bi. <laughs> so I felt very silly. I was like, uh, I don't think that's the best path for him, honestly. <laughs> So it's just when you're a Jehovah's Witness, you're in this bubble and and you have such a simplistic view of the LGBTQ community. Uh, and since you're not allowed to hang out with worldly people, with non-believers, then you never get the chance to really hear their perspective on things. So after that, I, I got to talk with 
a few more gay people in my in my travels. I started traveling a little more. I went to Brazil. I uh, I heard of the harsh conditions uh, in, ru in rural Brazil and for gay people. And that's a very common theme, in, especially in Latin America and in the United States as well. In, in rural communities tend to be more conservative, more um, more distrustful, more more hateful towards the LGBTQ. And this guy in Brazil was telling me of his experience and how harsh it was. And I think my, you know, those hearing those experiences slowly started to like crack into my faith, into my into my belief system because uh, I was taught to love my enemies, right? And to love all people. But deep down in my heart, I knew that I just had a disdain and a, a hate towards these people, which was just based on the Bible, really. <laughs> it was just based on the Bible. And that really opened up my mind, I think. To and when once I left the religion, I just, I just kind of, you know, I said, well, you know, if I don't believe in the Bible anymore, then I have no more reason to hate on the LGBTQ community. And mind you, like, I was never like I never attacked them. I was never like a bigot towards them. I was very respectful always, but. Like my inner person always had this, this like, um, less this disgust towards them, and I think that's something a lot of people may struggle with. If you left a high control religion or a you know fundamentalist religion, you even when you leave the religion, you might still carry that kind of like, I don't know that uneasiness when you're around a gay person or a trans person, which is something that might take years to to fix, to, to correct. And my experience shows that the best way to counteract that homophobia is to really listen to the experiences of gay people. That's the only way we can have empathy when we listen to people. So if you're like listening as a religious person and you're like, oh, well, homosexuality is so unnatural and God doesn't like it. All I ask you to do is to listen, to to really listen to these people, because what they say, what they have to say, is valuable. And I really find it tragic. I really do find it tragic that Christians, in general, not every Christian, of course, but a lot of Christians have been hateful, hateful towards this community. When Jesus was all about love, right? That that was his thing. He hung out with sinners and prostitutes. And I simply do not imagine Jesus hating on the LGBTQ community. I simply don't see it. <laughs> and I know some of you might say, well, yeah, Jesus hung out with sinners, but he didn't uh, condone their sin. He would still tell them to repent. Sure, that's true. But I think if you're a Christian... Your focus should be on love and compassion, right? That should be like your priority. Even if you don't agree with the lifestyle, with the LGBTQ community, which there's nothing I can do about that. You know, I can't, I'm not going to change your mind. But the very best you can do is to love and to be compassionate and to have an open mind towards them and to treat them as you would like to be treated. I think that's what's what would be the most important thing. Because any Christian who is vitriolic or hateful towards the LGBTQ community is just missing the entire point of the Christ, I think. And I, I speak of this as a non-believer. Because I uh, honestly, guys, I'm not even a Christian anymore. But I think the most important thing for a Christian would be, what would Jesus do? Would Jesus spew hate towards the community or would he encourage us to show love i think it's the second option and i think that's it's a point a lot of christians miss and we're all human 
I know biases take a lot of time to overcome. I know it's hard to overcome your homophobia, but it's possible. <laughs> it is possible. I know I've done it and I know I still have a long way to go because to be honest, maybe sometimes if I interact with a gay man, I, I, some of this like deeply rooted uh, like bias, like disdain that I had, sometimes it still like kind of shows its, its ugly head on my heart but i have to remind myself hey you know like you're not that person anymore so um that's why i'm an ally to the lgbtq community and i'm an ally because i know that they they suffer so much like i mentioned before they receive so much hate from the conservatives from the religious people and sometimes from their own families they'll be kicked out of their house they they'll be, they'll be disowned it's just tragic. It's, it's just tragic. And man, it's just, it, it, it really does break my heart to, to know this, that, that people have killed themselves over this. <laughs> it's, it's horrific. So, so please be kind towards them. Now that wasn't that, that's my experience with gay people. Um, of course, I met a lot of bisexuals, of course. It's very common, more common than you think. Um, there's also queer folk. There's asexual people. I know there, there is people that are not interested in sex. <laughs> um, there's non-binary people. Then, now, that's another concept that's very difficult to grasp. And I have to admit, sometimes I do have trouble, you know, coming to grips with the idea that some people are not comfortable in their gender, you know, they they don't they don't feel at home with calling themselves male or female, more like an in-between. And some people might some people might react by saying like, oh, you know, that's there's only two genders, there's only two sexes. <sighs> I'm not gonna get into a big discussion about that here, about the science behind everything. Um but as, as always, I, all I want in this podcast is to encourage you to be compassionate and to be respectful, you know? If someone asks you to, to address them in a different pronoun or if they identify, you know, as a female or a male or they're transitioning, is it really that hard to be respectful? Do we really have to resort to hate and to like vitriol <laughs> and call them mentally like mentally deceased and call them like I've seen it in, in a lot of Christian pages, you know, calling trans people mentally deceased and delusional. <laughs> yeah. Uh, people that hold on to these very fanciful myths, <laughs> calling trans people delusional. Isn't that rich? Isn't that rich? I have to admit that my transphobia was much more difficult to, to overcome. But I think what did it to me was actually talking to a trans person. And this was in Egypt. When I was in Egypt, I met, I met this person from, from Belgium. And... It was a, a person born male, but had transitioned early to female, right? So, as you may know, Europe has, some European countries at least, have more relaxed laws towards um, transitioning. So, some teenagers are able to transition a little bit early and get the hormones. So, I had no idea that this person was born male. She looked completely female, <laughs> She, uh, we went out for dinner just to have some food, nothing romantic or all. And, and then, uh, we had talked for several days. Uh, she was a cool individual, very, very, um, she was learning Arabic. So I went with this person to get some dinner and then she confided, confided with me. Hey, you know, I wanted to share with you that I'm, I was born male. I was born in the wrong body. And I was shocked <laughs> because honestly, I didn't see it. I was like, what? <laughs> you look like a girl. And she was like, yeah, well, I transitioned early. You know, 
in my country you're able to do that and i was able to take the hormones so that's why you know when trans people i'm, I'm gonna be very blunt like when trans people trans um they transition a little bit late they, maybe men that transition into females they'll have, still have like broad shoulders and they'll still have like a, a more defined shin so you're able to tell you know oh well uh that person used to be a male you know he transitioned but in this case i, I just couldn't tell <laughs> because uh this person had taken hormones very early and she had also like had surgery on her private parts and now had like a, a vagina so that was very impressive from a science point of view. But she told me like um, how difficult that had been. Even though her family had been supportive and of course she needed her family's permission to, to go through that. Uh, but she told me that sometimes she would still feel off, you know. It was just this struggle. And she told me how she she would struggle to find a partner that would accept her as who she was because um and she i'm almost quoting her on this she said you know maybe if i was the other person i wouldn't love myself like i i, I don't see how people would be able to love someone like me. That's that's what she said. And that that broke my heart. That um that made me so sad because I saw that this um this trans person still deep down had a a sort of self hatred or um or at least was aware of the hatred the world projected on her and that it would be very difficult to find someone that would accept her as who she was after learning that she had transitioned and that just broke me that that just i just realized that these people who transition they just have it so hard man and I mean, not to make you feel pity for or anything. Like uh, I know, you, like if you're a trans person now, you I know you don't want to feel pitied. I know that. But still, it's it's like if you're born in the wrong body, uh, it's like you're living life in hard mode, <laughs> and then you have all these bigots, all these religious fanatics, constantly talking down on you and calling you delusional and. It's just so unfair. I don't want to be the person that contributes to a trans person taking their lives. Which is, it's like suicide among trans persons is astronomically high. I don't want to contribute to that. Even by my, even if I don't attack them, I don't want to say something that contributes to this stigma towards these people even if they're a small minority in the overall population they still deserve respect they still deserve love and even if you don't agree with what they did they still deserve to be respected so i think that's the bottom line in all of this that um whether you're a Christian or not, whether you're religious or not, the most important thing is to respect people and to let them live their lives and to let them choose their path forward. If a, if a person, if a man wants to love a man, let it be. Why the fuck should you care of what two grown men or two grown women do in their private time? What should you care? What should you care if a man decides to transition into a woman or vice versa? It's their life. <laughs> They're not harming you. We have bigger problems to deal with than that. And 
and yeah man i mean fuck <laughs> what else can i say it's like i understand the struggle i um in when i did the caleb and sofia video uh i received so uh, about the lgbtq issue the one where they talk down on gay people i received so many comments from christians saying you know yeah jehovah's witnesses got it right this time you know gay uh, homosexuality is not good uh, uh, there's no way i'm going to convince you otherwise because the dogma is blinding you the the when you have this religion on top of you right and you have this blind on your eyes <laughs> uh, where i'm not able to convince you otherwise because you are putting the dogma over human compassion um but hopefully you change your mind if you are watching this and you're not open to lgbtq issues i hope you change your mind i really do I, um like on my channel i don't try to convert people i don't try to like make you leave your religion or make you become an atheist but in that aspect and in, in that one issue i do ask you to change your mind <laughs> Because it's very serious. Because it has real world consequences on people. It has real world consequences on people. And. I'm telling you this because. At least in the United States. Here we have. You know. Gay people can get married. And they can transition in some states. But. We still have. Religious bigots. Trying to impose their worldview Upon the general population. In a country. That was based on separation of church and state we still have religious bigots and if you if you identify yourself in this category i am calling you a bigot because you're trying to limit what the 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 freedom of people you know their their reproductive rights and the right to marry and the right to live a, a good life when you're attacking the community when you're attacking the reproductive rights of women over religious grounds <laughs> go fuck yourself <laughs> honestly go fuck yourself who the hell do you think you are there's these are still real world consequences we're dealing with because these religious people are just so bent on imposing the religion on the whole country <laughs> and I just hope I just hope they don't win. I just hope I just hope the the older religious population dies off eventually and the new generations can be more open towards the social issues that affect the LGBTQ community. Now, there's much more to talk about. I know this is just a brief overview and I hope I didn't trigger you too much, you know. If 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 you take something out of this is please Please listen to the community. Please break out of your little religious bubble that you're living in, that you may be living in, and listen to someone who's gay, to someone who's bi, to someone who's queer, asexual, to someone who is tra uh, transgender, sorry. Really listen to them, and hopefully that conversation can give you a bit of it, a bit of an open mind. Uh, yeah, I know people can change. I know people can can overcome their homophobia just like I did. Uh, just like, you know, you, you can get rid of the hate that was built on you. Because this isn't you. This isn't you. This is just tradition. The tradition of men. Generations and generations of religious dogma live on you. And you have the choice whether to continue the cycle of hate towards these people or to break it. And I encourage you to break it because the LGBTQ community is deserving of respect. They are deserving, they deserve to their voices to be heard. And I'm a proud supporter of the community. And I will always be. Because 
I'll put, always put compassion over dogma. And that's, um, I think that's um, one of my favorite things about leaving this religion, about leaving Christianity even, that my morality doesn't have to be dictated by the ramblings of of men that lived 2,000 years ago. If you want, if if that's how your cookie crumbles, if you want your morality to be based on these people that have been dead for 2,000 years and that have very little rev- relevance on our world today, if you want your morality to be based on a book that tells us to stone gay people and to stone people who pick up sticks on the Sabbath and who portray a God who drowned babies and who slaughtered Canaanites. Uh, if you want your morality, your objective morality to be based on that book, so be it. But you know what the beautiful thing is? I don't have to base my morality on that. And you don't have to be base your morality on that. You can base your morality on compassion and and showing love towards your neighbor. And if Jesus was still around today, honestly, I think he would be down for that message as well. As always, thank you for listening, guys. Um, Happy Pride Month. (laughs) And we'll see you next time.